Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. My funnel's cold, my funnel's cold, he puffed. I want a scarf, I want a scarf. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. Engines don't wear scarves. Engines with proper funnels do, replied Percy. You've only got a small one. Before Henry could answer, Percy puffed away. Henry snorted. Fiddlesticks, said Mavis, and flounced away. Workmen sanded the rails and tried to dig away the frozen mud, but it was no good. Everyone was impatient. Grrr, ah, wailed Mavis. I warned him to be careful, but he took no notice. Listen, Dookie, who worries about a few spills? We do here, I said, but Smudger just laughed. <laughs> Secretly, he was a little worried. But not for long. The guard blew his whistle and waved his green flag. Peter Sam puffed happily away, singing a little song. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. What fun it all is, he thought, as he journeyed along the line. Then Percy arrived to take George away. He was still rebelling. Railways are no good. Turn them into roads. The little engines were pleased to see him go. Rollers are rubbish, so good riddance, they called. But Boulder was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, oh no, it's behind us. Just ahead, they saw a small junction. One line went uphill. Boulder thundered past. Meanwhile, scuffing trucks. Then he heard Boulder. Oh no, it's heading straight for me! Shine brightly at night, but to Duncan they look like an engine. Next, his driver secretly threw a rock from the cab into the ravine below. It's the ghost! Take me back! Take me back, please! When Duncan reached the safety of his shed, he closed his eyes tightly. Spooked are you, Duncan? laughed his driver. No! wailed Duncan. I'm asleep! and refused. called the engines from inside the shed. I can't, called Cranky pathetically. When the... Gordon was feeling grumpy. This was making James cross. Why are you complaining all the time? Because I'm a big blue engine and I know everything. I shall complain whenever I want. You're just a small red engine with ideas above your station. I can't see any, said Percy. Where are they? Any what? Ideas above the station. The sky is empty. Like your smoke box, Percy, laughed James. But Gordon. suddenly he saw James pulling a long, slow train. Yikes! Help, save me. A quick-thinking shunter did just in time. What was that? exclaimed James. The signal. Ooh, help! cried James. Go away! But of course the tree couldn't. James tried to reverse away from the tree, but his train was too heavy. Then he heard a whistle. It's Thomas, called his driver. James felt embarrassed and worried that Thomas would laugh at him, but Thomas didn't. He knew that this was no time for teasing. Beep, beep, 
I'm ready, whistled Thomas. So am I. Wait till the fat controller hears about this. Meanwhile, James was enjoying himself enormously. What a clever plan, what a clever plan, he chuffed. Then he saw the fat... I'm going to be late. My fault, said the signalman. I didn't understand about Toby. Now, James, said his driver, you'll have to push Toby. What, me? Me? Push Toby and pull my train, too? Grumbling dreadfully, when he reached the workstation, he felt exhausted. Some children were on the platform. Coo, said one, the express is late and it's got two engines. I think James couldn't pull it on his own, so Toby had to help him. Never mind, James, whispered Toby. They're only joking. Ha ha, said James. Sometimes called them the bees. A good name, replied Boko. They're terrors when they start buzzing around. James bustled in. What's that, duck? He snorted. Are you afraid of bees? They're only insects after all, so don't let that buzz box diesel tell you different. His name is Boko, and he didn't. We... I wouldn't care, interrupted James. If hundreds were swarming around, I'd just blow smoke and make them buzz off. Buzz, 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 retorted Duck. Nice and warm. Buzz off! Buzz off! Hissed James. One bee burnt his foot. Ooh, ah, phew, phew. The bee thought James had burnt him on purpose. So it stung James right back on the nose. Eee! Whistled James. He had had enough. So had his fireman and driver. They didn't know. deeply and talked endlessly about it. He don't understand, Donald, how much the fat controller relies on me. Ach, I, muttered Donald sleepily. I'm Great Western and I... Quack, quack, quack. What? Ye heard. Quack, quack, you go. Sounds like you're an egg laid. Now wheesh and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself, said Doc indignantly. Heave a great heave. Oh, groaned Scruffy. I don't like this. Go it, yelled Doc. Well done, boy. Well done. Oh, well, Scruffy. Oh. I'm coming apart! And he did. Then... He didn't stop until he jumped straight into Thomas's cab. A off off. Thomas was too excited to sleep. He peeped his whistle to wake Percy up. Percy! Percy! I think the statue is of me, boasted Thomas. Really, Thomas? Go on, Percy. That's nice. It would be wonderful to have my very own statue, tooted Thomas. He couldn't wait for morning to come. But Cranky was taking his time. Hurry up, huffed Thomas. This is a special special. Cranky did not like being told what to do, especially by an engine. He became so cranky that he was careless with his hook. His hook knocked the switch, and the switch started the jet engine. And the engine began to whine. The whine got louder and louder and louder. Uh-oh, said Cranky. Before he could say anything else, the jet engine was rocketing Thomas up the track. Said Thomas. The driver tried to put on the brakes, but Thomas couldn't stop. Oh boy! The station master called ahead. Clear the lines, it's a runaway train. Signals were changed and points were switched. Thomas had never been so excited. Thomas flew by James and rocketed past Henry. And raced by Percy. They were amazed. Bertie was excited when he saw Thomas flying down the track. Want to race, Thomas? Beat Bertie. 
never mind. No one had ever seen an engine go so fast. Gordon had no idea that Thomas was racing along the main line. I am the fastest, said Gordon proudly. Hi, Gordon. Bye, Gordon. Gordon could not believe what he had seen. At last, the jet engine ran out of fuel and Thomas was back under his own power. He steamed gently back into Natford Station. Sorry for overtaking you back there, Gordon. Overtake me? I didn't so know. And so long that windows broke all over town. Definitely a coloratura, said Gordon. Look at the little green engine, Alicia Botti exclaimed. So sweet and dirty, like a proper steam engine. Peasant, Gordon huffed snootily. Yes, I am pleasant, smiled Percy. He was glad somebody noticed. Oops, said Ned. Hooray, cheered the workman. Ouch, said Oliver. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oliver was dirty and spooky. Dirty. Then a voice boomed from inside the shed. Do you mind? I'm trying to sleep. Thomas hoped it wasn't a ghost. Then his driver appeared. In coupling Is rods, it? he wanted to tell him how rude Elizabeth had been when she rolled up. Oh, it's you, said Elizabeth, looking down at the fat controller. Have you learned to drive properly yet? She's for it now, said Thomas to his driver. Elizabeth, said the fat controller fondly. My first lorry. I thought you had been lost. They were old friends. Thank you, sir. Mr. Percival, we must be very proud of all our engines. Indeed. Very proud indeed. New ones and old ones. You are all... Really useful engines. <laughs> and no engines whistle louder than Thomas and Luke. An engine needs. Duck still wonders about the lands beyond the horizon. But he enjoys being with friends most of all, and I think he knows that sometimes the best travels are those we can only dream about. Don't you?